All right, let's go ahead and start talking about some of these hacker rake exercises. Um, so I'm going to be doing these in Python 3. And so let's go ahead and get started. So let's see here. This problem, so basically we have a collection of um, socks. And so each number represents a separate category of sock. And we need to figure out how many pairs there are. So let's see here, we've got um, the number one appears three times, which means that there are three socks which are in category one. And out of those, you can make two pair. You can make one pair, because two of those socks go together. That gives you a pair. And then you've got one left over, and there's nothing you can, you can do with that. Um, so you just gotta, given a a list of numbers like this, count the number of pairs you can make, um, and the constraints like. Um, the length of the uh, list as long as as well as the um, the values are pretty small so we don't really need to worry about doing this super efficiently or anything like this we just need to come up with a solution um, so I guess the key thing to think about here is that um, if you the first thing we want to do is we want to categorize or we want to count the number of socks in each category. So like in this example, we've got 10, 10, 10, 10. So 10 appears four times. So we've got four of them. Um, so we want the code to count that up. And the, the second thing we want to do is we want to count the number of pairs. And so if we were to take this and divide by two, that would give us two. And so that's two pairs. So that makes sense. However, if we take something like the number of times 30 appears, 30 only appears once. Um, and so we can't form a pair. But basically what you can do is you can still divide the number of times that number appears by two and then take the floor. And that will tell you the total number of pairs because let's see here, so the 30 appears once, we divide that by two, we get one half, and then we take the floor of that. So the largest integer smaller than 0 0.5 is going to be zero. So zero pairs. Um, and, you, and so of course, if there's, let's see here. It's like if we, here when we have um, one appears three times, so we take three divided by two is 1.5, take the floor, that's one. So one pair and then one sock left over. All right, so I think there are efficient ways for Python to, um, or built-in ways to get like a collection of the unique, um, entries in this list AR, but um, because this is a simple code, let's just let's just do it sort of um, from scratch. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get a list of unique sock categories. Um, so we'll make a list of unique socks and we'll start with just an empty list and then um, for i in range n, basically we want to we want to search through um, the list ar, and every time we get a new category of sock, we want to add it to the list unique socks. So, if the ith entry of ar is not in this list unique socks, then what we want to do is we want to take this um, new category and add it to the list. So we take unique socks and then we append ARI. Um, and there we go, that will do it. Um, okay, so now we have this list of the unique socks, the unique sock categories. And then for every one of these, for every sock category, we wanna count the number of times that sock appears in AR, um, the list AR. Now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if these two steps can be done simultaneously, but given that this is just a warm-up problem, let's just do this, um, let's just do this the way that I have it figured out now. And especially with these types of exercises, like if you're doing this in an interview, you wanna go for speed. So you wanna get a solution that works first and then if you have time, try to optimize it. So let's try to determine 
the number of socks in each sock category. So now we're gonna have a new list called sock counts. And so basically what this is going to do is um, the ith entry in sock counts is going to be the number of times the ith sock category in unique socks appears in the list AR. Okay, so let's see what that would look like. So for I in range, and then um, N is the length of list, or N is the length of the list AR, but here we want the length of unique socks. Because um, the entries of sock counts need to line up with the entries of unique socks. Okay, so for all of these I's, um, I, I, I just call this sock count I equals zero, and basically what we're going to do, um, why is this, I can't spell, there we go, okay, cool, so now what we do, so for J in range N, so once, so you choose, for, for the ith entry, for the ith category in unique socks, we want to, we want to loop through AR, and whenever that particular category appears, we want to increase our sock count. Um, again, perhaps this could be done more efficiently, but this is a really straightforward, um, simple solution. So, um, you go through, so this J is, is looping through the entries of AR. And so if the Jth entry of AR happens to be equal to, um, equal to unique socks I, meaning that the, the Jth entry in AR corresponds with this particular sock category, then we want to take sock count I and just increase it by one. All right, and then, so once we're done uh, looping this throughout the entire list AR, we wanna take this sock count I and um, add it on to sock count. So we'll take sock counts dot append sock count I. All right, and then finally, so now we have this list of sock counts for each category. And so now we can go through and count the number of pairs. So the number of pairs will start at zero and then we'll loop through all the entries of sock counts. So for I in range sock counts, we'll take pairs and we'll increase it by, okay, so the ith entry of sock counts tells you how many socks are in this category. And like we said before, to find the number of pairs you can make, you wanna take this value, divide it by two, and take the floor. So the floor function that's um, in the math package, which um, is one of the things that we're allowed to import here. So math.floor sock counts i over two. And then, yeah, am I missing? No, that's good, okay. Then we just return pairs. All right, so this should do it. So let's go ahead and run the code. Just see if this makes sense and it seems to work. So let's submit it and make sure that it works. And yeah, it works for all the different cases. Um, so again, this is sort of just like a, um, a this is in the warm up section. Um, so this is just to sort of get you used to working in Python. Um, but yeah, this is sort of just like a straightforward problem and this is just a matter of figuring out how to set up these problems in your head and how to figure out the solution. Um, and so yeah, there we go. That is how we solve this exercise.